Hello. In this video, I would like to explain the application of Gauss's law. So, as you can see in the image, there is an infinitely long wire, which is one of the main applications of uh, Gauss's law. And uh, the wire is divided into blue and green zones. That is just to show that the area of the wire is divided into several unit areas. And we plug in a cylinder symmetrically around that wire. Now the flux, the electric flux, will come out of the wire. The wire is positively charged, so the flux will come out radially. If the wire was negatively charged, the flux would have gone in towards the center of the wire. So in this case, the red arrows show the radial direction of the flux and the gray cylinder here shows that we are putting a imaginary Gaussian cylinder around that wire. So we want to catch the charge. So the Gauss's law is all about closed surfaces. So in the previous image you saw that the sides of the cylinders are also closed. So here the side is shown as open just for the sake of representation. So the ends of the cylinder will not see a flux because in this long wire there is no electric flux traveling along the wire or along the axis of the wire. All the flux that there is is only coming out radially. So now you can see the flux, the red arrows cutting that cylinder. That's why it makes sense to put in a Gaussian shape as a cylinder around the wire. Now you take that cylinder for a length L. The wire is infinitely long but we can choose a Gaussian cylinder of length L only and a radius R. Then we follow the formula that's there. The flux, the total flux is E into surface area because electric field itself is a flux density. E is flux per unit area so flux will be E into the surface area and surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r into L. Now plug that into Gauss's law which says that that flux is equal to Q into 1 by epsilon 0. In fact Gauss's law is nothing but saying that the flux coming out of the wire is proportional to the charge on the wire which sounds logical. Therefore the flux coming out of the wire is equal to the charge on the wire into a proportionality constant. And that constant is 1 by epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is the permittivity of the medium. It could be vacuum, air, or whatever it is. So with that, let's equate the two equations for flux. So put E into 2 pi RL equal to Q into 1 by epsilon 0, then you get E. In the denominator, you will get epsilon 0 and 2 pi RL. We can stay with that. Now, if you want to go further, the charge Q can itself be expressed as charge per unit length into length. So mostly you will see many problems with charge per unit length. Now we substitute the total charge Q is equal to lambda into length, where L is the length of the Gaussian cylinder, not the length of the wire. The wire is infinitely long. That's where the Gaussian cylinder becomes so really useful. So we selected the L. So when we substitute this into the equation for the electric field, the L and L will cancel and we get an equation as E is equal to lambda into 1 by epsilon 0 into 2 pi r. The lambda is the charge per unit length of the wire. The charge is given by somebody. Most probably it will be given in a problem. The R is the radius of the Gaussian cylinder which we selected. So it's in our control. So everything is in our control and we can find the electric field. For example, if we select a Gaussian cylinder with a large radius, and you can see that here, a bigger radius than before, the, only the R will be larger. And the electric field on this surface of this Gaussian cylinder will be proportionately less. That's all there is to the application of Gauss's law. I hope uh, this was easy for you. Uh, have a great day. 
Thank you very much.